I don't have four years under my belt like Mr. Chukri does. I have 42 days. So the Haas have been gracious enough to, uh, we've had some great meetings together and we've had uh, some great conversations and I hope those continue. One of the things when I ran for city council is I wanted transparency. I wanted you to understand the inner workings of the government. And so, you know, the city government impacts our day, our lives every day in our neighborhoods. And I feel that's extremely important that the city provide the services that we require to live in our community. I, uh, the city of Mesa is run by the mayor and council members. Council members are divided up into districts. We have districts one through six. In district one, there are 78,000 uh, residents within district one. And you can think of our city government as a board of directors, just like Mr. Chukri has. So the mayor is our chairman of the board, and the rest of us are board of directors. And we sit as your government, and we talk about and develop policies and guidelines and whatever we can do to help support our community. One of the things I just want to share with you, some, some positive things, is that uh, recently Chicago Cubs won the World Series. And that was a great thing. And in fact, this year, uh, the World Series trophies in Mesa, there's a big rally tomorrow. And I've gotten so many emails and requests to go to the games. It's been pretty phenomenal. Can you get me in there? Can you squeeze a ticket for me? And I go, I only got one ticket for me and my sweet wife. So that's all that's going right now. And there's a, uh, and I wanted to share with you this, just the economic impact of the, our spring training teams, just Mesa, and the Chicago, uh, Chicago Cubs and the Oakland A's bring about $138 million of economic impact to our community in one month. And I just learned this this past week. So when December comes around and everybody's spending money for Christmas time and their sales tax increase, there's a huge spike on the graph and then it kind of comes back down its normal level and it spikes back up in March. And that's because of sales tax revenue for our community. The city back in uh, 1942, some of our forefathers, and I don't remember all their names, maybe Mr. Haas does, but they created an enterprise system. The enterprise system was developed where the city would own some businesses. And those businesses, they developed an electric company. There's a square mile in the downtown area here that's an electric company. They have a natural gas company. They provide us with water, effluent, our garbage pickup, and there's actually a cooling system in the downtown Mesa area that's a, it's a high-end uh, cooling system for large businesses. And last year, those businesses earned $186 million. $104 million of that money was transferred into the general fund to offset some of the uh, payments that we have and to help run our general fund. So that's less money that you and I have to spend out of our pocketbooks and in our utility bills. So we have an enterprise system that's very robust. It makes money for the city. Uh, the infrastructure, the, the rest of the money you think, well, where's the rest of the $82 million? Well, it stays there. It pays for the uh, employees and the infrastructure, and there's a reserve fund. So it goes to pay for things that break down, just as anything would happen. With that, uh, there's a shared connector path. There's a connector path. Some of you have driven the freeway. If you look down uh, between uh, the 101 and the 202 loop coming to the east from the Tempe Marketplace, there's a shared use, uh, uh, a shared use path, and it's, it's for anybody that likes to walk, run, ride bicycles. You know, it'll, it'll extend from the Tempe Marketplace all the way to Riverview. It'll go up to Bass Pro Drive and Alma School. It'll go up Alma School to 10th Street. It'll go over to Brown Road. Well, 10th Street to Date to Brown Road and get on the Canal Bank. And the mayor's vision and other in the community is have a connectivity in our community. A lot of large employers, when they come and look at our, our community, they look at number one, our public safety. How is our public safety? How are our neighborhoods? And how's our employment? What do we have for a qualified workforce within our community? So these, these amenities that we call our museums, uh, our art, our connector paths, these are things that businesses 
want to see it in a community. Just this past year, our economic director was able to bring in 2,800 new jobs to the West Mesa area. And that's a huge, uh, just a, a great uh, hit to our, well, I shouldn't say hit, but it's, it's going to support our neighborhoods. And these 2,800 jobs are going to come into the Fiesta District, to Broadway and Dobson, and to Riverview. Right now, we don't have enough Class A office space. More businesses want to relocate to, our, to West Mesa. And we don't have enough uh, land, really, to build more Class A office space. How many of you live close to Riverview Park? Some of you do, and been over there. So the new um, commercial buildings that are on Bass Pro Drive and Alma School that you see along there, that's all Class A office space. And it was just built and fully leased out. And that's a good thing, because we need those businesses within our community. One of the things I, I bring up is people ask me about the light rail. What's the light rail? I mean, how's it doing? And, you know, what, what, go, what do we pay? Um, just this past year, in the 15-16, the city wrote a check for $6.5 million. And out of that, they, they're going to get about $4 million in funds back from uh, fares and fees. And also, I, I, I found out the Arizona Lottery also pays for some of the light rail infrastructure. So those two will bring about $4 million, and the, the rest of the $2.5 million comes out of our general fund to fund the light rail costs. The light rail is going to move from uh, right here at Hobson and Main Street out to Gilbert Road, and it'll terminate there. And once it terminates, there'll be a new parking lot on the southwest corner of Gilbert and Main, where the businesses are now, about a three and a half acre parcel there for parking. They have found that wherever the light rail terminates, that's where the most parking is. So if you think back when Dobson and Main was the end of the light rail, that place was always packed. And so now, Mesa Drive and Main Street is always packed. And so once it terminates out at Gilbert Main, that'll be packed. So they, what's going to happen is there's a, a development called Sycamore Station, where the old Tri-City Mall used to be. And it'll be mixed-use commercial, apartments, uh, patio homes, and senior living of about, uh, there'll be about 350 new homes and apartments right <coughs> around the old Tri-City Mall area. That's going to change the footprint. That's what I'm really trying to push. That'll change the footprint of our community. The low income credit tax housing that developers have come into our, our Mesa area, uh, they've, they've complained to us, the new council, that, well, we can't afford the land if everything rises up. And, and I'm thinking, well, that's a good thing, because what I want is market rate housing. I want robust businesses and commercial businesses. All that brings in uh, sales tax dollars to help spread out and pay back and down our budget. So Sycamore Station is going to be our first robust market rate housing with apartment living. The next one will be uh, at Country Club and Main Street if it continues to go through. It's uh, Chicanos Por La Casa. They're going to build a market rate housing complex right on the corner, the north uh, west corner of Maine and Country Club, where El Chirito used to be. How many knows El Chirito? El Chirito. <laughs> El Chirito used to be there. And this is where Bailey Break is uh, today. So with that, there's uh, uh, the mayor and council. We just met today. We had a retreat where we worked together and we trying to learn and understand each other so that we can be more effective in our government. And I think we're going to do very well this next four years. I'm really excited about that. Let me just check and make sure. Um, oh, people ask me about the Mesa Art Center. The Mesa Art Center uh, last year had 400 and almost 60,000 people visit the Art Center. And that's, that's just the Art Center. That's not including the Idea Museum and the other Art Centers. And there's another museum downtown, Southwest Museum. So a lot of people are coming down and, and see our downtown area, and they're using the light rail. So the connectivity that we're trying to provide and move people, not necessarily uh, in cars anymore, but 
using the light rail. Last year, well, in the last two, two years, 2.5 million people used the light rail just in the Mesa area. They expect, once it goes out to Gilbert Road, a 40% increase in light rail usership. So there's a lot of good things, again, going to be coming to our area. I, I'll take some questions if there's any that you'd like to ask me. Can you talk about how people can make a difference at Okay, very good. I, I meant to address that earlier. So at our council meetings, what we have is uh, if you want to come to a city council meeting, you just, okay, first of all, the agenda is posted uh, at least 48 hours before, minimum 24 hours, but it's posted like we just got posted today for Monday's council meeting. So you can come in to look at the agenda, go online, and there's a really great uh, link called, it has just uh, been available, it's called open.mesaaz.gov. You can look at every data in there, every stat, st uh, any statistics are there, uh, and it's called an open port data, so you can go there and look at data. So you can come to a council meeting, fill, if you have something to discuss, there's a blue or yellow card you fill out, and you hand it in to the city clerk, and she'll put you up, and you can either speak if you want, or you can either mark a box. I, I do not wish to speak, but I support or oppose a project. So it's a very simple process, and you can just do that with your cards there at the council meeting. Did that cover your question? Your answer. Okay. Yes, you sir. want to add that people should also look at the study sessions? That's where the real... I've been following the school board, and that's where most of the real meat is debated in the, uh, the meetings, I think. That's, that's where they get into the details of stuff and then the uh, yeah, absolutely. council meetings are so, so make sure they look at those study sessions for the meat of the... Yeah, I had a three and a half hour study session this morning. <laughs> we are covering the meat. <laughs> and then we got found the potatoes too, you know, so. What we do have, if any of you that live in District 1, I have, uh, my wife Leanne, I have a uh, sign up list. If you would like to receive our District 1 newsletters, you can uh, fill that out and give me your email address if you wish, and you will get all the update information I'm going to be sending out monthly for our District 1. And then we can also take input uh, on that website. And you can reach me anytime. Most of you have my cell phone number. It's not hidden. Uh, I'm very happy to talk on uh, issues and whatever is required. So I know several of you attended our budgeting. We had a, a, a very great budgeting meeting. I just want to bring that up. Mr. and Mrs. Haas were uh, instrumental in that. But just again, when we met with the city manager, the chief financial officer, and our director of uh, uh, budgeting director, I mean, I think some great questions were asked and some great answers were received. So hopefully that allows unwanted transparency in, in our budgeting process. Right now, we have about our city budget is about $396 million, and we have about a $1.4 billion between liability and uh, assets within our community. So we've got a lot of, uh, a lot of money out there. And uh, is there any other questions? Anybody else? Yes, sir. Uh, you talked a little bit about this. I'm, I'm curious if you have any information on future plans for the Fiesta District. I've heard college, I've heard offices, I've heard a couple different things. Has anything been finalized for that? Preliminarily, uh, there's going to be some refurbishment of the old uh, Fiesta Mall. And so some of the businesses that still linger there are economic directors trying to get them to kind of move a different direction and either do Class A office space, because that's so vital in that area. Uh, this business called Santander is bringing like 900 new businesses, to, uh, jobs to that area. And so that's going to really jump start that area. And so we want, the goal is to get those developers to be engaged and look at, here. here's the new picture. We're thinking outside the box. <clears throat> and then we're going to move across the street. There's new conversations about <clears throat> the uh, northwest corner of Alma School of Maine, or Alma School of Southern. So it's been very long. That developer just stuck to his guns and didn't want to change. But now he's having conversations with city. Can I add something? Because I live real close. I live within a mile of Fiesta Mall, so I pay a lot of attention to that. 
but the, the, the mall itself is going to be put up for sale because the I think one guy owns, the guy who owns the old Macy's buildings owns the old Best Buy building, but the mall itself, somebody else owned it, it was in foreclosure, but they've just decided to put that up for sale. And so hopefully they'll get that, and then as far as Sears go, we just have to wait for them to go bankrupt. <laughs> so, but anyways, there is some action on that particular thing that I think that developer is waiting for that few to fall before it moves. There's some dominoes out there, and if they do fall, we're going to be really uh, blessed as a community. But it's taken a long time. I'm, I was looking at the numbers in 2008, and I said, I don't even want to look at those numbers because what I want to move forward is today and, and be uh, just help everything grow. So, okay, thank you very much. Uh,